Hi, this is Phil Newman. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Longevity Technology, and I'm delighted to say that I'm joined by Aubrey de Grey today. Aubrey, hello. Hello, thanks for having me. Oh, and Aubrey, Aubrey 3.0 now, I understand. <laughs> I guess that's kind of what it is, yeah. I mean, um, uh, I, I mean, 1.0 was, of course, the Methuselah Foundation, which I created jointly with Dave Goebel in uh, 2003. Um, and then... Uh, 2.0 was Science Research Foundation, which was created in 2009. We basically bifurcated Methuselah. Methuselah, of course, is still very much a vibrant force in the field, um, but the purpose was really to clarify our messaging because mm -hmm. the, uh, the Methuselah Foundation at that time had um, a couple of rather divergent activities. We were doing a bunch of like PR, really, with the prizes, and we were also doing research. and. Uh, that seems to have worked out very well. And then um, now I'm starting uh, a new foundation, which is basically the um, way forward that was forced on me by the unpleasantness that happened last year. Um, but the uh, outcome is actually pretty good. It's like a bit of a lemonade out of lemons thing because it's um, a nice way for me to explore perhaps slightly edgier things than was happening before. Um, and I understand, uh, are Methuselah involved still, are they in some way? Methuselah have been involved in the past year. Right, okay. Um, but that's really because over the past year I've had to operate in kind of stealth mode mm -hmm. uh, on account of the litigation that was going on and so on. Um, but but um, in May of last year I was able to cause a very large donation of nearly $10 million uh, no, it, that would otherwise have come to Sense Research Foundation to go to Methuselah, but for my um, unilateral um, uh, use. And uh, yes, yeah, so I've been uh, quite active behind the scenes over the past year in supporting various things, research projects, conferences, um, advocacy work. Um, so yes, when you see um, the Methuselah Foundation being credited as a sponsor for some of the things over the past year, that's kind of me in disguise. Right, got it. So let's talk about some of the things that you've actually been addressing now, and let's maybe deal with the transition work that you're doing. So uh, i -Core, that's one of the activities that you're now translating and, and pushing forward. Right, so i -Core is undoubtedly our most successful spin-out company out of Sense Research Foundation. It was originally created to pursue our work on macular degeneration, and that hit a uh, number of speed bumps, but they persisted, and it's now in a very healthy state and likely to be acquired by a big pharma company very soon. Oh, that's interesting. Um, but in parallel with that, i grew rapidly and started doing other stuff in self senescence and also acting as a very um, powerful and um, highly sought-after CRO. And it's that CRO aspect that is the basis for the new... Um, uh, collaboration that I'm going to have with my new foundation. Uh, because what we want to do is to put a lot of effort into combination therapies in mice um, that will be late onset therapies started at probably 18 months of age uh, and which will synergize of course. These will predominantly be damage repair therapies, no surprise there given mm -hmm. my own preferences. Um, uh, but the idea is to race as fast as we can towards this milestone that I um, coined many, many years ago called robust mouse rejuvenation, which is basically defined in terms of a doubling or so of, life, of remaining lifespan starting at, as I say, late age. Um, now, of course, other people are interested in doing similar things, but by and large, the work that other people are doing will be restricted to dietary interventions or you know, pharmacological interventions that can be applied, that can, can be administered orally. Uh, we believe that the um, most effective interventions will be ones that are more uh, invasive, uh, you know, injections of stem cells, um, perhaps senolytics and such like. So these but, are the combinations you're referring to? That's right, right. Yes. Okay. And the point really is that um, at the moment, as Brian Kennedy said today actually, uh, uh, dietary interventions, uh, small molecules, Combining them is basically just black magic. Nobody really knows what's going to work. Whereas 
um, kind of rationally designed um, damage repair approaches may be more predictable. Mm -hmm. And you're looking at uh, parabiosis as well as, a, as another therapeutic area? We will very probably look at some kind of variant on the, on the parabiosis concept, um, almost certainly not parabiosis itself, but right. rather plasma exchange or possibly this neutral blood exchange that Irina Convoy has been pursuing recently. Yep. Um, yes, that's definitely one thing that I'm interested in. Okay, so how's this all sort of gelling together in terms of this organisational structure that you're now going to have? Is it going to be something akin to what SENS uh, is and was, or is it something that's going to be more diversified in the way that you're running this, this portfolio of activity? Well, I think it's going to be very like SENS Research Foundation, actually. I mean, it's going to be a 501c3 again, uh, a public charity. Um, but in particular, I would regard it as a progression from SENS Research Foundation. The work that SENS Research Foundation has been doing is absolutely indispensable work. I mean, it would be really, because I put it in place. Um, so uh, I definitely want that to continue, and um, you know, it's got excellent staff, of course, and it's well-funded at the moment, so, um, so that's, all, that's all great. But yeah, I think um, we can consider the new foundation to be a kind of progression from there in the sense of having the ability to do stuff that may have been kind of one step beyond what um, what Sense Research Foundation would do. The um, work at ICOR that we've just discussed is actually a, an extension and an expansion of one of the projects that's going on at Sense Research Foundation already, uh, a project that we call CNOSTEM. Um, but, but some of the other projects we're going to be doing will be in the cryonics area, which is something that we never, well, not officially funded at Sense Research Foundation. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And let's just talk a little bit about uh, senolytics and senotherapeutics yeah. as, a, as a domain. Um, I, I would say that there's been a, a lack of news coming out of the sector for a while, it feels like. I mean, do, do you feel that the science is just at a natural point in its development cycle or things moving around and perhaps opinions changing on how, how it works as a therapy? <sighs> well, um, it's pretty complicated, actually, because on the one hand, there is certainly a lot of controversy about the reproducibility of some of the w early work that was done on various analytics. Uh, but on the other hand, some of the um, areas that have been done, have been worked on, have reached the clinic in cl clinical trials um, and with some success. So um, Unity, for example, mm -hmm. definitely, uh, you know, they put out a, um, uh, uh, the results of a clinical trial. I think it was Immaculate Generation uh, recently that was step away, definitely hit its end point. That's what you want. Yep. Um, which is a great relief given that Unity's first clinical trial did the opposite and sank their share price by about a factor of three. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so you feel that there's still some, some merit now in obviously where people are putting their faith in senotherapeutics and so on? I do. And actually, you know, my own feeling was originally, maybe mm, four years ago, that um, thing, that it was going so well that we at Science Research Foundation didn't really need to do much on it. But um, some of my colleagues felt uh, that actually there were still serious gaps in what we could do with, 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 with analytics and such like. And uh, so they, uh, they persuaded me to let the foundation continue to pursue that. And that's been quite effective as well. Some of the recent uh, publications that we've put out have shown that um, there is definitely, there are new approaches to, um, to synalysis that may be more effective than the ones that have been explored by others. Good. Well, obviously, we hope for great results on all fronts, of course. And let's talk a little bit about the organisation that you're now part mm -hmm. of and, and leading. Um, wonderful moment yesterday where everybody was up on stage. You dragged everybody up as you, as you started the conference. So can you maybe just talk about the people that are part of the organisation and uh, their contributions? Yeah, absolutely. So um, uh, the people I got on stage yesterday, first of all, the new board of directors that I've put in place, uh, the only one who couldn't be here because of visa reasons was Daria Kalturina, the lobbyist extraordinary who was um, very instrumental in the recent addition of ageing to the International Classification of Disease. Um, but the other board members uh, really span a lot of different areas of expertise. Greg Grinberg, who's going to be the executive chair, who's going to be putting like half his time into, into this. He runs a company called Actual Food, which is focused on um, lifestyle and dietary uh, interventions, the kind of other end of the spectrum from this. But we definitely very much view it as, as a spectrum and therefore it makes sense. And then um, Martin O'Dee, who of course has just organised this wonderful conference along with me, and um, 
who will act as kind of events director as well as a board member. And the other two uh, directors coming in, of course we may um, expand the board in due course, um, are um, prominent transhumanists. Uh, one of them is Gamali Stolyarov, who runs the US Transhumanist Party, and the other one is David Wood, who runs London Futurists. And these are, again, people that are, uh, you know, have demonstrated very um, good skills of the sort that it's good to have on a board of directors. But what really brings all of these people together is that over the past year when uh, Seth Research Foundation has been going through all this crisis of um, the board taking it in a direction that departed from donor intent, um, these people, on the other hand, have, uh, by both word and deed, very strongly shown their respect for donor intent. So let's talk about um, how people can get involved. I mean, have you launched your website yet? Is it uh, is everything ready to go, or is this like a preview of what's happening over the coming months? It's a preview of what's happening, but I'm hoping that we will get to a point within weeks rather than months of at least having a um, an initial website where people can actually, you know, for example, donate, but also read about the activities that we are initiating. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, the main thing that has prevented that so far is that the eyes are still being dotted and T's crossed on the litigation that uh, where, where several of the um, largest donors from the airdrop sued the sued the Central Research Foundation. Uh, but um, the yeah, the, that, that's that's the time frame we're thinking of. And in terms of projects, of course, we're also. Um, doing stuff outside of research, uh, very much as we, did, we used to do at Sense Research Foundation. There's one extremely important activity that I was able to um, inspire and also sponsor um, that happened about a month or two ago, a retreat in um, the Sierra, Sierra Mountains in California, which was called Less Death, and which uh, was a kind of um, step um, forward from the excellent education uh, activities that we've had at Sense Research Foundation for many years that was focused on undergraduates. This one was focused more on a variety of people, typically people with existing skills like entrepreneurial track record and so on, who are interested in the field but were kind of perhaps not um, really sure how they could maximally contribute. And it was a blowout success. Good. Uh, yeah, so that's on the education side. And then on the advocacy side, I've been feeling for a little while that we've reached the point where we can actually have some greater impact on the um, corridor of the power, right. especially in the US. So we're supporting a new initiative called A4LI, which is run by um, Dylan Livingston. And finally, there is a new entity called the Healthspan Action Coalition, led by, um, De led by Bernie Siegel which will try to, well, I'm describing it rather flippantly as the antidote to the AARP, uh, but basically the idea is to talk to the general public and get them to see that um, ageing really is a treatable medical condition. Mm. Very diverse, Aubrey, so uh, a busy guy as always, and thanks very much for joining us today. It's been fascinating. Pleasure.